it's about time we started getting a menu and have our win and lose screens actually work. So to begin with, I have a new background here called BG Title, and it is 640 by 480, it does not tile. I've also created a new object in the miscellaneous, this object enter, and it uses the sprite enter that we created several episodes ago. And I've created a new room called room title, 640 by 480, speed 30, and it includes the background as well as this press enter object. So let's set up the easiest objects first. We'll open up the object enter, and I will add an event, keyboard, enter, and I just want this to go to the next room, which in this case is going to be our first level. So in main one, under the rooms, I'll just select the next room action, and that's it. And then I'll open the object game over, and this will be very similar, add event, keyboard, enter, and I am going to give it the action to go to different room, and I'm going to tell it to go back to the title screen. And that's it for here. And before we set up our win object, we're going to have to keep track of what level we're on. Presumably we'll have multiple levels in the game, and so when we beat a boss and get that victory screen, we'll want it to go to the next level, but if we're at the last level, then we're going to want that to go back to the title. Or if this were a real game, probably a, a credits or something similar. But since we're not putting that in, we're just going to have it go back to the title, so let's open up the object scorekeeper. And remember, we made this object persistent, which means it's going to exist in all of our levels. However, if you remember to our last game, there was a little bit of a bug where when we went back to the title screen, our lives and score showed up and we had to remove it. So this time around, when we're checking to see if we're at the last level, before we go back to the title screen, we'll just delete the scorekeeper. But in the create event, we'll add a new variable here. And that variable will simply be titled level. And we're going to give it a value of 1, because we'll start on the first level. And actually, let's make this easier on ourselves and turn this into a global variable. So I'll reopen that again, and at the beginning, I'm going to say global dot level. That way, any object in the game will be able to access this variable. Okay, so we can finally close this, and then we will open up our object win. And since this appears at the end of the level, this is what's going to test and see if we are at the last level or if we need to go into the next one. So let's add event, keyboard, enter, and we'll come over to control, and we'll test for variable. We'll test global dot level, and the value we're going to give this will be the maximum number of levels. So if we've got 10 levels, we'll set this value to 10. I'm going to make this easy on myself and just set this value to 2. We'll just add another room to make this work. So if we're at the final level, then we need to go back to the room title. But before we do that, we should also get rid of the object scorekeeper because we don't want that appearing on the title screen. So right above that, I'm going to take a destroy instance, uh, set that to object, object scorekeeper, and make sure it is above the go to room title. Since I've got two actions here, I will also need to put them inside of blocks. And now that should work. But if we're not at the last level, we just want to go to the next room. So let's put in an else down at the bottom. Go back to main one and just say, go next room. And I just realized I did not put this destroy instance on our game over screen. So we need to go back and do that. Reopen the object game over. And then come back to main one destroy instance, make it apply to the object, object scorekeeper, and so now it'll clear that up as well before it goes back to the main title. So finally I'm going to set up my two rooms. I'm just going to come down to our room assets and duplicate the room one. In the settings I will just call it rm2. And in this one I'm just going to have the boss. So I'm going to get rid of our other objects close it, and then reopening room 1, I'm going to make sure all I've got 
is some enemies. In fact, to make it easy, I'm just going to have this one lone asteroid. And actually, this isn't going to work because it is our boss object that determines when the level is over. So we're going to have to put a boss object in both. But just to make sure that we can tell the difference, I'm going to put this asteroid here anyway. And I'll just add that boss. So it's going to take a little while to test this. We need to test against both of them. And one last very important thing, actually, is to open up our room, too. I forgot, since I duplicated it, I put in a duplicate object scorekeeper. We need to get rid of that, too. We only want the one throughout the whole game. So now it should be ready to test. Here's our title screen. And we go to our first level. Hopefully I can avoid dying. I did not. That's OK. There we go. Victory. I got my extra life. And our score and lives should carry over. And here we are in the next room. Just lost another life. I really should have lowered... Uh-oh. I want to make sure that I can win first. There we go. And this should take us back to the title. And there is a fatal error. Ah, trying to move to the next room after the last room. I know why that happened. It is because in our object win, I forgot to increment what level this is. So let me just come back here in control. Underneath our else, we're going to have to put some blocks. And then we need to set variable above the go to next room. Set the variable global dot level. Give it a value of 1 and relative. That way we'll add 1 to our level counter. And I'm going to go ahead and test this again. OK, here we go. And now this should take me back to the title, and it does. OK. So I'm going to play this again this time, and now I'm going to lose. So I'll just destroy myself there. Just destroy myself there. We do seem to be having a little bit of an issue where we have invulnerability when we're still not blinking. But this works. Obviously, in a real game, you'd want different boss types at the end of the levels, otherwise it would get very repetitive. But now we can go on to looking at timelines, which will allow us to actually create levels that have waves of enemies that we can control, so we can make nice patterns that will fly across the screen at timed intervals. And we'll get into that next time.